Hello there, my dear viewers, and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Jakob Hack. I'm your host, and you're watching a Hack Attack episode. And in this episode, we're having a look at Octacron, which is an eight channel drum MIDI sequencer. So this thing does not produce any sound of its own. It can be run in a standalone mode, and it can also be loaded up as an AUV3 MIDI plugin inside any other type of DAW that supports AUV3 MIDI plugins. Now, I was contacted by Tass and Marcus from Octacron because they had watched one of my previous videos about something I wish that all sequencers did. In that video, I was talking about randomization options and being able to randomize more than just the triggering of notes. Well, these two guys, they took it to heart and now they're here with a big update for Octacron and they've introduced some new stuff that we can use to randomize our patterns. Now, since this is the first time I actually feature Octacron on my channel, I want to do a proper walkthrough. I won't be going into everything in the app, but I will be going into enough for any beginners or potentially new Octacron users to just grab the app and get started right away. All right, so before we begin, I just wanna say that you can use Octacron to sequence drum apps and or hardware and that's what i'm doing right now i've got octacron inside aum sending midi out through my steinberg ur 816c sound interface and then the midi is going out from a cable and into my mc 101 Now, when it comes to sequencing iOS drum machine apps, it's even easier because you're doing it all internally in your iPad. I'm just gonna go into the MIDI here and set up Octacron for AR909 by AudioKit. It's a really nice drum machine. And in the case of this one, it turns out that Octacron already has a pre-saved MIDI mapping for it. So if we go into the Octacron button and go down to load under mapping here, we can find analog rhythm 909 and there it's already made sure that all of the channels are putting out the right MIDI notes for all of the channels inside AR909. And from here on out, we can just start sequencing. First up, up here in the upper left corner, we can see the Octacron logo, an octopus. And when we press that, we get to the main menu. Now in here, we can save and load our projects and also MIDI mappings. And if you, for some reason, want to do melodic stuff with this drum sequencer, you do have an option for that. Now at the bottom of the main menu, you have an option for opening the manual. And when you press that, you get taken to a website with the manual. Now, another thing is that there are actually two ways of getting into the pattern submenu and the instrument submenu. One way is to press down shift in the upper right corner like this, and this does two things. Number one, it gives you a way of opening the pattern submenu and also the instrument submenu. But secondly, for the instrument channels, it gives you a quick overview of what MIDI notes you're using for all of the channels. This gives you an easy way of identifying if there are some sounds that aren't playing, you can see why, and then you just have to press edit. Now, the second way of actually getting into submenu is to long press on stuff. 
All right, right now I'm using the stand alone version that works just like the AUV3 version, only in here with the standalone version, we have a few added controls like a play button, settings for BPM and settings for link and MIDI. Otherwise it's the same as the AUV3 version. Right here, we have our note grid and there are no hidden menus. You simply just tap where you want notes or you tap on notes you no longer want in there. Up here, we'll find a row with the eight patterns we can have, and all of them can be chained into a song. And this can be a little bit tricky to figure out how it works, but if you look closely here, you can see that you have some numbers, zero, 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 zero. You see, if we long press on a pattern like this, we get this menu here, and here we can copy and paste and clear. And if we look at the top here where it says repeat in song, if we increase this to at least two, go to the next one and repeat that one to two and then go <coughs> and then go to the next one and say that this one is going to repeat once then if i go to the beginning here and press play then you can see that it counts down to zero before it goes to the next one and then counts down to zero before it goes to the next one and on and on and on and on that's how you set up the chain of patterns in a song now back to the grid here, because if we press the button that looks like a note grid, we can set a clock division and we can also set up the number of steps up to 32 all the way down to one. And this is actually a global setting. So when you're setting this to 32, it's making all of the patterns 32 steps long. Now there are some other settings in here, but if you are looking for the swing settings, they're also in the note grid settings. Here you have a regular swing option, but you also have something called swing grid. And if you are into wonky beats, then definitely go in here and experiment with this because with it, you can create some really wonky beats. Now, right down here at the bottom, we can find a global MIDI setting. And this setting will actually override whatever setting you might have done in the instrument channels, which we are going to have a look at next. So to the left here, we have eight instrument channels. And right now they are named kick, snare, clap, low tom, mid tom. And we can edit this long press to get a menu. What I want you to have a look at, if you are a beginner, is to go down here where you have the instrument channel name and also the settings for the MIDI channel and the note. So these are settings you need if you're working with maybe a drum machine or a drum app that might have some weird note mappings. And the nice thing here is that you have a test button. So whenever you're setting it up, well, you can test out what type of instrument you're actually reaching. Here you have some other settings like move and clear row. And what it basically does is if I put in some note here and just long press to get to this menu and press here, we're moving the notes or we can clear the row. Now down at the bottom here, we have modulation. So right now we can see modulation for velocity, but if we tap here, then we get this menu where we have velocity, step repeats, probability, row length, and then eight MIDI CC channels of modulation. Now to actually turn them on, you have to press edit and then activate this switch. And now you have a brand new MIDI CC channel to modulate stuff with. But yeah, using this stuff is pretty easy. So if we wanted to modulate some step repeats, it's easy. You just draw like this and there you go. Okay, so first up, there is a way of 
making patterns. And you can find it through the pattern submenu. So if we long press on a pattern here and we go down here, we can see that we have smart randomize right there. If we press this, it will randomize notes for all of the channels. And here we can also move stuff back and forth and up and down. Now, there is another way of actually randomizing stuff, but per channel instead. And we can find that if we enter the instrument submenu. So we long press on the kick instrument here, and here we can see smart randomizer and mutation. Now here we can increase density of notes and randomness and then triggers and then press apply. And as you can see, we can now randomize stuff just for the kick instrument. Same thing if you wanna do it for, let's say the Tom here, just randomize stuff to your heart's content. But what about modulation randomization? If we go into the modulation submenu by pressing here, then stuff like velocity, step repeats, and the MIDI CC options here, we can actually have them mutate over time. All right, so I'm gonna show you how this random mutation works. And I'm gonna do it with Reusmacher FM, which is an FM drum machine from Brambos and Octocron, of course. And inside Octocron, if we go to mapping and press load and go down all the way here, we can see that we already have a pre-saved mapping for Reusmacher FM. Now, when we load that, then all of the CC modulations in here, in the modulation menu, they have all been set up per channel to control stuff inside Reusmacher FM. So you have eight MIDI CC mappings per channel. And in this case, with this mapping loaded, we've got access to pitch, speed, amount, decay, attack, saturate, pan, and level. Now we're gonna use pitch because I wanna show you what happens when you use the random mutation. So first we have to turn it on. We do that by going into edit, and then up here, we press right there, and now this CC modulation is on. But as we can see, there is nothing moving here on the pitch in Reusmacher FM. Well, we haven't set up any chance or range for the mutation section, and if we look here, in its initial state, when you turn it on, all of these MIDI CCs will always set the value to 50%, like this. But you can, of course, draw if you want, and when you've drawn something, you can actually have the random mutation work on top of what you've drawn. Well, we're gonna go into the menu again and press edit on pitch here, and what I'm gonna do now is pull up on chance. And as soon as I pull up on range, we're gonna see the pitch move around. So I'm gonna pull it up here, and there you go. The pitch is moving. And this is without us drawing anything, it's just randomly mutating. Now let's set this down a little bit and pull down the range just a little bit so it moves a little bit less. And now we can draw too. And as I said before, when you have random mutation on, it will still mutate the value on top of what you've drawn. And I really like this because it gives you variation over time in your drum patches. And remember, you can randomly mutate velocity values and also step repeat values. Now you can't do that for probability and row length, but you can always draw in modulation for them. And if we use that together with the stuff that was already in here, like the probability for instance, what it all adds up to a very interesting drum sequencer. <laughs> I highly recommend this app to anyone that wants something that isn't cluttered. I mean, look at this interface. Everything is big and very, very clear. It's easy to set up stuff because there aren't that much under the hood, even though you have to do some menu diving. And if you're into randomizations and probabilities and stuff like that, then you just can't go wrong with Octocron.
I've put a link to the app down in the pinned comment so you can go get it for yourself. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like the content, give me a thumbs up on your way out. And if you didn't like the content, I, I, I don't really know what to tell you. If you want to support me in a financial way, go check out my preset packs for Trooper and or Timeless 3. If you don't want to do that, check out my music. If you don't want to do that, check out my Patreon or PayPal. And if you don't want to do any of it, that's fine too. As usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it.